What's going on traders? Corey Smith here, CoreFX, bringing you another weekly technical talk video. Today is Friday, May 3rd, 2019. We got another Forex trading week in the books here. Um, anybody new to these videos, appreciate you checking them out and tuning in. Basically what I'm doing here is I'm gonna do a full breakdown of the Forex markets. I'm gonna go over all the US dollar major cross pairs. I'm gonna go over a technical breakdown of each one of them, what we got going on. I'm gonna go over my watch list of what I'm watching for the coming week ahead, see what trades we have on the radar and what potential setups we have, as well as fundamental breakdown of what happened this past week in the news, driving technical price action, and then what we have to look forward next week, what we wanna look out for with our trading and with our setups. All right, guys, I'm our returning viewers. Love you guys as always. Appreciate you taking the time to watch us. Make sure you guys throw a like below. Throw a comment if you want me to see something, if you have any feedback in general, and subscribe to the page. Turn on notifications so you are alerted every time one of these videos drops. All right, guys, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Let's go ahead and jump into the charts here. All right, guys, so starting off here with our relative performance for the week, this shows us overall performance of each individual currency. It is weighted against the US dollar. That's why we see no price gain or loss for the US dollar as this is weighted against it. However, this shows us the overall performance of each individual currency. As you can see, the pound leads the charge, uh, much more uh, hawkish tone out of Governor Carney of the Bank of England this week in their central bank meeting. You can see New Zealand, Aussie, US dollar, the bottom of the charge, and then you got Euro yen behind. This is a little bit of a risk off week, um, as you can see here from the way these numbers are playing out. But we like to go over this Real quickly, just to show you guys what's performing better and worse than others in the Forex markets, as this is a pairs trading game, and we like to be pairing the strong against the weak and looking for opportunities there. So this is what we have going on this week. This is what the top performers were, and this is what we have looking forward to next week to see if we can piggyback some of this momentum. Moving into the charts, starting with the euro dollar, as you guys can see, we are still respecting this downward trend channel, right? We hit the bottom of the trend channel, pull back, we saw... We hit resistance here. We were looking for potential shorts off this resistance, but price blew right through it, came up. Then we got this strong rejection candle here, and price has sold off since, and then today has rallied um, once again. So we had a little bit of a whipsaw week here for the US dollar. Saw some strength earlier in the week, ending with some weakness here um, later on in the week, but we're still in about the middle of this channel, right on a strong weekly level, so no clear direction. Just gonna wait and see where the euro looks to be heading next versus the dollar. Pound dollar, on the other hand, has now switched trend. As you can see with this Bank of England um, hawkishness, we have some strength returning to the pound. Um, and as you guys can see, this downward trend line was broken, 50 SMA is broken, 20 SMA is broken, set a new higher high. Trend has reversed now, right? Um, we are now pushing higher. We set a new higher high. After new higher high, what we wanna do is wait for price to pull back, set a higher low, and then try to catch that next push higher. So that is where we stand right now with the pound. We had a higher high set. Now we want to wait to see if a lower low is going to be formed, look for long opportunities, and catch that next wave. But if we throw a little um, line out here on the chart, you can see we are you know, approaching an area of resistance, right? We're on the 130, 150 level. We've got all this in here where price has respected this level. We have a strong expanded range bullish candle here, so we don't want to try selling against this, but we could wait for a little bit of a sign of price losing momentum and try to short it back down to our higher low. Um, dollar, Swiss franc still sitting up here um, in this kind of high basing pattern. We're seeing all kinds of rejection to the upside though. You can see one, two, three, four, five wicks in a row rejecting buyers and pushing lower. And now we have a, bullish, a bearish engulfing closing here on Friday, which is a very bearish sign. So what I would be looking for out of this pair is a continued correction as we were calling last week down to potentially this level to maybe catch that next push higher. And as you can see, this is a uh, pretty significant bull run we've been on here without any real pullbacks. So this could be our pullback back down to this weekly level um, and looking for long opportunities potentially here. Dollar yen is at a border of potentially um, breaking this trend. As you can see, we set a higher high, pull back for a higher low, set another higher high, and have now pulled all the way back to retest the prior higher low. So this prior higher low is a very strong support zone. It is a daily trend line and it is our structure. So if price breaks this, we are now in a downtrend. If price doesn't, then we could see this range being fulfilled and respected once again and potentially look for long opportunities back up to the top of this range, especially if we see price reject off this level here because this is a very significant support level now for the dollar yen. Dollar CAD. 
as you guys could see, pretty ugly price action this week. We came down and shot up, and now we're closing down again here on Friday between a higher high, and we do have higher low here after the breakout of this pattern. Really no clear price action. Nothing really jumps out at us here with this pair. Not looking to pull any triggers on this pair, but that's where we stand. New Zealand dollar, US dollar, still on a downtrend. Pulled back, sold off, having a little bit of a bounce here, but I'm still expecting price to move lower. Um, nothing really, again, jumping out at us to enter right now, but we are looking more to the downside than anything, continuing this downward trend. And Aussie dollar, US dollar, sitting on weekly support, closing with a bullish engulfing candle here off of this support. That could be a sign that we are going to get a more of a pullback, more of a correction here. Maybe we come back up to retest this lower high again as a retested lower high and potentially move lower. We do have a moving average crossover once again here. Looks like the 20 is about to cross below the 50. Bearish moving average crossover, suggesting potential downside as well to continue in this pair. Now that takes us on to what I'm watching for this week, a little bit of a radar, I guess you could say, of what pairs are on my immediate watch list to start the week on uh, Sunday and Monday. And that is going to be starting with the Japanese yen. Just to let you guys know, there's not too much on my watch list this week. Um, just not that many setups fitting my criteria right now. But the Japanese yen is still in this range. We saw support hit in the bottom. I told you guys we could be looking for long opportunities once we break this trend line. We broke it, retested it, and shot up. Um, pretty big time this week, right? So we're closing the week at 146.40, starting the week um, down here at around 144.40, so about 200 pips. Pretty good move here this week out of the pound yen, and we are going to wait and see if potentially next week we find resistance once again at the top of this range, and maybe now we can find a short opportunity to ride back down to the bottom of the range here and potentially catch another range bound trade from this gray box up here back down to this gray box down here catching another few hundred pips on the way euro australian dollar um another one has set a pretty strong trend changing move here higher with this bullish push set a new structure higher highs breaking above the 50 and the 20 day moving average now we've hit resistance we've got a shooting star wick candle here we've got a uh doji candle here Back-to-back -back three rejection wicks of this strong level looking left That is showing us buyers are losing control sellers are starting to step in the market I'm going to be looking for a correction in this pair potential short Lower time frames you can see this is where we are rejecting here You can throw a little counter trend line here that we can wait for price to break before going short And then we can try to catch that ride on that pullback down to this level here before potentially catching the next trend changing push to the upside Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar. As you guys can see, this is another nice pair. We reverse trend, set a trend changing higher high. Have set a pretty significant bullish run higher here. Hit hit uh, resistance from the left at dollar seventy, and has pulled back. Found resistance, found support now at the three eighty two fib. Got a nice bullish engulfing. Has been kind of stalling around since then. But I think this strong support level as well as Fibonacci can hold and we will see a push to the upside back up to this dollar seventy level top here. New Zealand dollar Swiss franc, another range bound set up here at the bottom of the range. Within a downtrend, but we have been respecting this range very nicely. Big bearish engulfing, pushed down lower, but we got back to back small body candles at the bottom of this range. I think a nice push to the top of this range could be in play this week and could be a setup we're watching. That is Basically everything that I'm watching starting the week off takes us to the Dixie US dollar real quick You guys can see this was a pretty jaggedy week for us, right? We sold off we shot higher and now we're selling off again. We're on a very strong support level here at 9750 and Price is still making an up, upward move still in an uptrend set a new higher high pull back now to set a higher low on strong structure We have a nice hammer rejection candle here the price bounced off. We are engulfing these prior two days candles stick Price action with this Friday candle close. So uh, again, not looking to make any immediate decisions or jump at immediate things, but um, we have mixed signals here, but we are sitting on strong support and we'll wait to see what this does. Gold still in our falling wedge pattern. Um, getting a nice bullish engulfing here with a double bottom pattern, right? We touched bottom here, failed to break, pushed higher, found a little peak here, pulled back again, couldn't break, pushing higher. This is now the neckline of our double bottom 
And if it breaks that, it will most likely be breaking our wedge, and that could be a great opportunity to catch a gold long trade. U.S. oil has been selling off. As you guys can see, back past couple weeks, we have been correcting off the highs here, $66 a barrel. Now back down to $62 a barrel. We broke the trend line, now testing 50-day moving average. So we'll have to wait and see what oil does here. Um, but you know, we have been seeing more of a weak oil as opposed to what we have been seeing in the past with a um, strong oil in this bull market run that we've been seeing all year long. So we're having our first deep correction of the year for oil. This could continue in reverse trend, or this could just be giving us a nice buy opportunity to catch longs with the next move higher. All right, guys, so a quick fundamental breakdown. What happened this week, as well as what we got going on next week. Um, not too much happening early start in the week. Spanish parliamentary elections, as you guys can see here, um, Sanchez won the election, not really too, uh, you know, crazy of an outcome. We got Socialists Party winning. Um, didn't really affect too much. And then we had um, U.S. dollar had some missed figures here, not really too uh, big of a deal, pretty medium impact news. China had their manufacturing PMI, Purchasing Managers Index. This is a gauge of the manufacturing sector, the economy, one of the biggest economies in the world and probably the biggest manufacturing economy in the world, China. Missed their PMI expectations. Both accounts, this set a little bit of a negative tone to the start of the week. And our um, New Zealand business confidence level was pretty low as well. That took us into um, Tuesday. We had GDP out of Canada, negative 0.1% versus positive 0.3% last reading. So that's not a good reading for the Canadian dollar. U.S. consumer confidence is back up to pretty damn high numbers here. Beat expectations, that was a good sign. And then we had New Zealand dollars unemployment rate miss expectations with their employment change, but stayed at their 4.2% unemployment rate. Wednesday, we had our FOMC statement, which um, was taken a little bit mixed. There was a whipsaw from the US dollar around this event. Powell basically said the uh, Federal Reserve is sticking the course and um, just remaining patient, waiting to see what the markets do, not in any rush to hike rates. Uh, not really talking about slashing rates yet, even though President Donald Trump's been calling it and uh, a lot of other critics of the Federal Reserve call for uh, back down to lower interest rates. But right now, sticking to the status quo, sticking to being patient and waiting to see what the market tells them. Um, and then we had our uh, Bank of England meeting in England, which was a much more hawkish tone. Basically, Governor Carney was saying that investors are a little bit too um, gun shy on the possibility of the Bank of England getting back into their rate hike cycle and going back into rate hiking rates because uh, the whole Brexit situation has been slowing down the Central Bank of England and making them be a little more hesitant with their actions. However, Carney did come out and say um, not to feel that way and not to think that way because the, the, they might not be on that same page. So much more hawkishness for the pound as it seems like they could be hiking rates more uh, and faster than we thought. Building approvals, missed expectations in Australia, another not so good news. Um, and then you have the US dollars, non-farm payroll today, which has been taken negatively and it's most likely because of this miss in average hourly earnings. Our unemployment rate has been unbelievable, astronomical, 3.6% unemployment. That's unbelievably low. We created 263 jobs in the month of April. Unbelievable, unbelievable, double what we had expected. So this is an extremely good number. Sorry, not double what we expected, but a lot more than what we expected. Extremely, extremely good number. Um, and the unemployment rate, as you can see, did tick lower even than we uh, were last reading. But this uh, average hourly earnings, basically wage growth has been stagnant around the world. Even though jobs are at full employment, economies are at full employment, everybody's got jobs, um, there is not much growth in wages. Wages are kind of stagnant. They're staying the same. They're not really going up much. And that's not a good thing because that's not really translating into a growing economy. We want consumers to be making more money, spending more money, stimulating more growth. Um, so that is where we stand with that. And as you can see, the markets are taking it a little bit more negatively than they are positive. Next week, as you guys can see, we've got more PMI out of services sector in China, retail sales, polos speaking out of Canada, inflation expectations out of New Zealand. So New Zealand and Aussie should be moving pretty well Monday night because we have the uh, RBA rate statement right after as well. So these two pairs are very highly correlated, usually move pretty in sync with each other. And there's a lot of news events out of both these countries Monday night into Tuesday morning. So that is definitely going to be a very strong 
start to the week for these pairs, followed by the Reserve Bank of New Zealand's Central Bank meeting. Again, very, very strong Monday and Tuesday. Might want to either look to trade these pairs around the volatility, if that's how you trade, or just stay out of these two pairs and anything matched up against them if you don't like trading around just high, high volatility news. CPI out of China on Wednesday, consumer price index inflation reading, and then we got our trade balance out of Canada. Jerome Powell out of the U.S. Fed speaks, and our PPI producer price index inflation numbers on the production side of the economy on um, Thursday as well out of the U.S. RBA policy statement, this is basically just a summary of their monetary policy statement. Ooh, excuse me, guys. And then we have GDP out of Great Britain, huge reading, especially after this central bank meeting this past week. This is going to be all eyes on the pound Friday. And then we have Canada's unemployment rate. They're usually the first Friday of every month as well with NFP, but this Friday was too early in the month. They couldn't have their data ready in time, so it was the second Friday, May 10th. That is going to be this coming Friday. And then we have CPI core price, I mean, consumer price index inflation numbers out of the U.S. Massive market mover for the U.S. dollar. So if you want to avoid events like this to trade on Friday, do not trade the CAD, the dollar, or the pound. Monday, Tuesday, don't trade New Zealand and Aussie. Um, Thursday, you can still trade around these, not too big of events. But all right, guys, that sums it up. I hope you guys enjoy these videos. I hope you guys get something out of me coming in and making these for you. I do like making them, but I do them for free for you guys and your educational purposes. So uh, please, again, it means the world to me to leave a like and a comment below. Subscribe to the page. Get notified when these come out. Um, let me know how you feel. Let me know what you think. Let me know if there's something you want me to cover. Let me know if you want me to email you, if you want me to check out your trading. Anything you want to do, this is where you can reach out to me. Check out the links below. I've got a free trial to my signal room. I've got a full online course with 50 plus hours of content, all kinds of materials, quizzes, written, audio, video, goes through everything you need to learn to, to succeed in trading. You just got to put in the work to do it yourself, obviously. Um, I show you exact strategies that I've developed and I guide you into developing your own strategy. And uh, yeah, check out those links below and check out my YouTube page with all kinds of other free content. But um, that just about does it, guys. I really do appreciate it. I uh, thank you guys very much. I hope everyone has a great weekend and let's get this week's trading week.